Hello everyone, my name is Albert Gasti and I'm the NVIDIA B lecturer of iCal Training Academy. I hope you all are staying safe in this lockdown period and that you are all doing very well. Now, the purpose of these videos are just to give you a little bit of background for 3D drawings and any little extra stuff that's not in our MDDFB curriculum. Now these videos aren't going to be very long, it's more going to be like a tips and tricks video, uh, but of course I'll add a picture on the screen as well of the drawing that we are doing uh, while we are doing the drawing, so you should be able to understand completely what we are busy with while you're watching the video. All right. Now so for today we are going to do the basics of three dimensional drawings using AutoCAD 2017. Now in AutoCAD there is a workspace that you can use for three dimensional drawings. So you don't need any special softwares like Inventor Fusion or SolidWorks to do any three dimensional drawings. Now, for AutoCAD, to find this uh, workspace you're seeing on the screen here, at this moment, it's very easy. You're just going to go down to the bottom right, and at this gear, so drop down. If you click on it, it will give you three workspace options here. Now, in most cases, you are going to use drafting and annotation for your two-dimensional drawings. And for our purposes because we are doing the utter, utter basics of three dimensional drawings. We are not going to use the 3D basics but we are going to use 3D modeling. So normally your AutoCAD will look like this if you use drafting and annotation. But in our case we are going to select that drop down and choose 3D modeling. Now the reason we use 3D modeling instead of 3D basics is because you've got so much more options to use. And this will of course help you a lot uh, when you're doing a little bit more complicated three-dimensional drawings. Right. Now you'll see the user interface will look similar to what the 2D and annotations and drafting workspace is. But you'll see there are quite a few key differences, of course, but we'll go over that later. Firstly, I'm just going to explain to you how the coordinate system works. Because if you understand how the coordinate system works, it makes it a lot easier to do a three-dimensional drawing. Now, to start is, I always think that it's best to start at your zero point before you do any three-dimensional drawing, right? So, let's say I want to draw a cube that's 50 by 50 by 50. A normal um, cube as you're going to see it every, well, your normal basic cube. Right. So, to draw a cube, you can go to the modeling tab here at the top right. And you'll see there's a drop down. You can click on it and you can choose from a variety of different 3D shapes. Most of these shapes are going to be the basic shapes that you'll use to do 3D modeling. Now in this case we're going to use box because we are just going to draw a normal cube. Right. Now when you start a cube it's or any three dimensional drawing for that matter it's very I highly suggest that you know exactly where you start the drawing. You can't just click anywhere and start drawing it. I always suggest using your zero point. That's where your coordinates are, well, basically exactly in the middle of your workspace. Right. Now to do this, I've already selected the box to draw the cube. So now I have to specify the first corner of this box. Now, I want it to be at my zero point on my x and my y axis. So, in like in 2D, you will type in your value for your x axis first. And you type in a comma for your y axis and you type in zero. But now, because it's in 3D, you've got depth as well. Now, your depth is your z axis. 
right so in this case you're going to type in comma you're going to type in zero comma and then zero again and type enter now you'll see that it will automatically start exactly at the center of your page or your workspace in this case this will make it a lot easier when you're planning out something that's a bit more complicated and a bit bigger as well so you'll start by typing in the dimensions as I said the cube's going to be 50 by 50 by 50 so I'm going to type in 50 because I want it 50 millimeters wide type in comma I'm typing in 50 because I want it 50 millimeters long and I'm typing in 50 because I want it 50 millimeters high and I type in enter but you'll notice that it will render out just as a normal square right this is because you first need to pan the drawing around or move the drawing around so that you can see it in a 3d format now you move a drawing around the same as you would do holding down mouse button number three or the mouse wheel and then dragging around the drawing right but the difference comes in in 3d that you'll use this block here at the top right corner to choose which view you are looking at in this case we're seeing the top view so you're only going to see the top of your uh, cube if i click on this corner over here it's going to show me my top, left and my front views in other words it's going to be first angle of a graphic but in this case it will be rendered out as an isometric view but if I want to get a more in-depth look to it maybe at different angles to see how the object will look like in the end of the day then I just click and hold uh, this cube at any point and then I move the drawing around as I want it right so in this case we're just gonna leave it like this makes it a bit easier but yeah so now we've got a very 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 basic cube in three dimensions but you see it's drawn in wireframe it's basically uh, the same way you would do two dimensional drawings showing all your hidden detail but still with uh, hidden uh, detail with normal straight lines but to change this we go to the view tab in your home ribbon at the top drop down you click it when you get a whole lot of different uh, types of ways the software will render out the object you are drawing like we can choose conceptual we can even uh, type in sketchy then it will look like you just drew it on a piece of paper freehand with a pencil so but for most cases you'll use shades of grey it makes it a lot easier to distinguish the different faces of the object from each other right now to practice the theory of drawing from a certain point on your coordinate system we are going to do something different we are going to add a cylinder on top of my cube but I want it to be exactly on the center of my cube right so we are going to choose a cylinder here at this drop down the same as we did with a rectangle but now it's going to say to you specify center point of base um, in this case I always suggest typing in the coordinate of where the center point of the base of that cylinder has to be now we know the cube is 50 by 50 right so I know my x-axis along this point which is highlighted in red is going to be 25 because I want it to sit exactly in the middle of the top of my cube right you'll see now in a moment when I type in comma then on my y-axis which is highlighted in green I want it 25 millimeters from my center point because the length of my cube is 50 millimeters right now to get a height I know the cube is 50 millimeters high and I want the cylinder to sit exactly on top of this top face here so I need to type in the height of my cube as well and for that I have to type in my z axis so if I type in comma I can add that and I type in 50 and I type in enter then you'll see they ask you 
to specify the radius of your base. Now for this case we'll make it just normal 20 millimeters. Press enter and then it will give you the option of choosing for height of a cylinder. Now there's a key difference. If you type in the height of your cylinder as a positive number like normal 70 or 50 or whatever then it will draw the cylinder upwards. If you type it with a, with a minus at the end or at the front as a negative number then it will render it downwards. Right. The same with any other shape when drawing in 3D because we are using uh, coordinates well coordinates is a basis of any three dimensional drawing especially when you are doing uh, 3D printing or CNC machining or any of those uh, types of work so we want the cylinder to be uh, the same height as a cube so we are going to type in 50 and press enter and there you go there we rendered out two shapes and the spacing of the shapes is determined by the coordinates we typed in. So you can play around with this if you have normal AutoCAD uh, like if you have AutoCAD 2017 then your user inter interface will look exactly the same if you have 2019 it will look only a little bit different but they all work about the same so if you have AutoCAD you can do three dimensional drawings just remember uh, the quality of a render after you finish drawing the object and the speed to which you can draw it greatly is greatly determined by the quality of your computer's processors and the graphics card itself and the amount of RAM your computer has. But of course uh, if you have just a normal laptop that can and run uh, AutoCAD smoothly in 2D then you should have no problem doing very basic three-dimensional drawings but of course we'll get on with that a little bit later on uh, in a different video so yeah I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helped you a lot so thank you for watching uh, stay safe and goodbye